friends. Today for Fiction Friday, we're reading Chapter 10 in Master Frisky by Clarence Hawks. This chapter looks interesting because it's all about dog language. I wonder what kind of language humans thought dogs used back in the early 1900s when this book was written. My mommy and daddy are pretty good at figuring out my doggy language, what I mean when I growl and bark. I hope Frisky's master is just as good as reading his barks. Chapter 10, Dog Signs and Dog Language. I have been a friend of the dogs for many years, and from much that I had seen long before I got Master Frisky, I had become convinced they had a way of talking, if not in real words, yet in signs, looks, and motions that are quite as good as words. After my acquaintance with Master Frisky began, I, of course, had more chances of studying dog language than I had before, so in the course of time, I came to understand a great deal that went on among them that would have escaped the notice of some people. Some of the more common signs and signals I shall tell my readers, but other signs I have promised to keep secret. For, as Master Frisky says, if folks once knew the dog language, that would be an end to all of their secrets. Here is one of the incidents that led me to think that dogs had a language of their own. I was sitting in the hammock watching a flock of blackbirds that were in a big elm tree. They were visiting and scolding away at the top of their voices. Presently, I heard a patter on the sidewalk, and looking up, I saw Ned, Frisky's particular friend, coming down the street with a bone in his mouth. He tried it into the yard, and after snuffing about for a moment, he seemed to make up his mind that Frisky was not at home, which was the case. He laid the boat down on the lawn and looked longingly at it, but it was not for him. For after a few minutes, he picked it up and went and buried it in the garden. He then brought a stick in from the woodshed and laid it on the lawn and trotted off in the direction of home. That is very queer, I said. I will keep watch and see what happens. After an hour or two, Master Frisky came home covered with mud and very tired. He was trotting along, looking rather dejected, when he saw the stick. He went up and smelled it and gave a short, delighted bark and then trotted with head up to the corner of the garden, dug the bone up that Ned had buried there, and in less time than it takes to tell, he was lying by my side gnawing it. Well, if that doesn't beat all, I said. The stick was a letter that Ned had left for Frisky, and if it had said upon it, Dear Frisky, I have left a bone for you. It is buried in the northwest corner of the garden. The meaning would not have been plainer. Now I will tell you some of the most common signs and signals in the language of dogs. For these signs, they depend on their ears, eyes, nose, paws, and tail. Also, barks, growls, whines, and grunts are brought into their language. They also use sticks, stones, bones, and prints of their paws to tell their friends different things. When one dog goes up to another and sticks up both ears and scratches with his hind feet, he means, let's play. And directly you will see them go tearing away, chasing and tumbling over one another in the most excited manner. When two dogs go up and snuff noses, and at the same time wag their tails, they mean good morning. When a dog sticks up both of its ears and stands perfectly still, he means hark, I thought I heard something. And when he has located the sound, you will see him trot off to find what it is. When a dog puts one ear up and the other down, he says, It is very queer. I don't understand it at all. When a dog draws down his lips until his teeth show all the way around and gleam white, he says, Go away. I don't like you. Take care or I shall bite. But when he opens his mouth and shows his teeth and at the same time wags his tail, he says, I like you. Let's be friends. And then you almost expect him to laugh. He looks so good-natured. When a dog stands still and holds up one paw, he says, It is very interesting. I wonder what it can be. When he puts his tail between his legs, he says, I am awfully afraid. And if he is a timid dog, you will see him run. When one dog starts to call out on one another and does not find him at home, he leaves a stick near his kennel. That means, I called on you today, but you are not at home. If he leaves two sticks, it means, Come and see me tomorrow. If the dog cannot find a stick, 
he makes a great many tracks in the dirt that mean the same thing. When a dog is going by his friend's house and cannot stop, he will give one short bark, which means, how are you? And the dog will answer with two barks. That means, first rate, how are you? If my young readers will watch the dogs at play, or as they trot soberly about on business, they will see them using all these signs, and many more that are most interesting. And if they are patient and love them, they may learn many strange things about the life in Dogtown. Wow, Master Frisky's master sure pays attention to all the signs and signals that Frisky gives him. I'm not sure my mommy and daddy know all that much about the way I talk and communicate with other dogs, but they're learning. I teach them every day, whether befriending other dogs at the dog park or on the street or at daycare with my friends, or even my talking with them because they are like dogs themselves. They are my pack and should be made to understand me. They do pretty well though, and their favorite times are when they are sad or needing a snuggle and I cuddle up to them. That they understand most plainly. Well, that's all for today and Master Frisky. Join me next Fiction Friday for another chapter and be sure to check out my channel on Monday for another Fun Music Monday song. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Bye!